What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Medicated Sports Talk. I know I've taken a couple of days off, but, you know, it's been some crazy NCAA basketball going on, and this shit has me hyped. It's so exciting watching this stuff, especially that first day. These are the... The two days are the best days, and, you know, the Thursday and Friday, and then, you know, it's always exciting, you know, this day, Saturday and Sunday, to see who fucking goes to the uh, Sweet 16, but other than that... This shit's exciting, and, you know, I'm definitely, you know, already know I'm going to be talking about how Virginia loses to the 16th seed. I mean, how? Every year, it's always like, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to fucking happen, and it doesn't happen. You know, that 16th seed loses by, like, a few points, or they just get blown out, like, this year when we were watching yesterday, not yesterday, um... I believe it was Thursday, yes, Thursday, when Kansas was playing Penn, and fucking, you know, Penn's, like, looking like, oh, dude, they're gonna pull off this upset, they got this, they got this in the bag, and then Kansas just shows up, like, yeah, we're the better team, and then, we're, what you know, I'm just, like, I, I'm anticipating the 1 through 16 seeds, because, you know, man, I love 1 through 6, 1 for 16, I just love it, because I like to see how competitive the 16 seed comes i like to see what kind of edginess they bring what kind of mentality are they in and let me tell you umbc brought it last night they brought that fucking shit they gave it to virginia like virginia deserved it i hate virginia i've always hated virginia especially since i've been a big maryland may fan man the only thing it was sweet watching Virginia lose. I think the only thing that would have made it a little bit sweeter was Duke. Oh my god. Could you imagine if Duke lost to a 16 seed? Could you imagine like how much more the internet would have blown up? Like It was Virginia and they were obviously the number one seed and everything, but everybody hates fucking Duke. Like... You can go to a bar and probably be like, do you like Duke? Do you like Duke? Do you like Duke? Do you like Duke? And probably one in every five people will say, I like Duke. And those are the douchiest people. <laughs> but it was sweet watching them lose. Like, just to see history made. Like, for all these years that basketball fans and sports fans are like, this is the year. This is the year. I remember being a kid, just waiting every year, seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, watching college basketball. Like, yo, a 16 seed's gonna do it. You know, and you just gradually get older and you're like, dude, it's not gonna fucking happen. And I remember just sitting in my room, just like, does the 16 seed play today? What time do they play today? Oh, okay, 9.30, whatever. And like, it's like my mission to watch that game. And, you know, it's always once that game starts to go out of whack, you know, I'm always going to go ahead and change it. But there was no out of whack. That was just straight. Virginia looked like they didn't even know how to play basketball. They weren't making any shots, you know. They couldn't buy a basket. And it honestly looked like anything that UMBC was tossing up honestly just went right in. I mean, you got dudes dropping teardrops. Excuse me, you got this dude just running up throwing a floater. From, like, near the three-point line. Like, what are you doing, man? And that shit's going in. So, I mean, UMBC was just making everything. I mean, a 20-point win? Dog. Virginia's embarrassed. Like, if I'm a player, I'm not even showing back up on campus for a little bit. I'm not showing my face. Are you serious? A 20-point loss? Now it looks like Arizona's loss to Buffalo is just like, oh, okay. Well, they lost, whatever. Like, that was going to be the biggest uh, story of the tournament, especially since they have the best player on their team in the in the country. And now we got the 16 seed pulling off the greatest upset maybe in sports history right now, you know, in recent history. I mean, granted, UMBC is still a great team because, I mean, they made the tournament. They're not a bunch of bums who don't know how to play basketball. <laughs> like, <laughs> UMBC's Twitter was like going off at people just saying like well we don't look like a bunch of ymca like this isn't our first time it's like yeah i remember when i had my first beer like dude anyone can win in basketball in basketball like it's so different than football i think because <coughs> it just is like i don't really know how to describe how like like 
anyone can beat anyone in basketball if you guys are just athletic enough. And that's really it. I mean, it's not like you're like pushing up off against the defensive lineman and I'm stronger, he's stronger than me, but you know, I'm just getting lucky today. Like, it rarely fucking happens, you know? Like, yes, upset, upsets rarely happen, but I mean, like, in basketball, I feel like they're more likely to happen just because it's like, oh, you just have to be hit, hitting that lucky shot that day or you just have to be feeling it that day. You know, like, a quarterback's just not going to go into a game and feel it and throw 10 touchdowns. <laughs> but a player will feel it and be hitting that hot streak and go in and hit 10 threes, not eight threes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like the upset is more likely to happen in a basketball game than in a football game. And it was so sweet as a fan, as just, it was just awesome. Especially being from Maryland and watching UMBC do it, which was sweeter. It would have sucked if Maryland, University of Maryland was a 16 seed, but still, it was sweet because that's some hometown pride right there. Let's go. It was awesome to see. We made history. Even though I am not a, like a fan of UMBC, I love the, I'm the fan of the sports and I love this shit and it's awesome. So it was definitely great to see, you know, um, speaking of how they won, they fucked everyone's bracket up and they definitely fucked mine up. Um... Because in my official one that I made on Yahoo Sports, I had them going to the Final Four and, I think, um, yeah, losing to Kansas. So, I mean, um, I had them going all the way in one of my official ones. I know how I said I was only going to make one bracket, but um, last minute I ended up making five. And um, I just kind of panicked and one of them I did put Virginia in winning. And no one has a fucking perfect bracket now. Which is crazy, but it's awesome. It never is going to happen in this entire world of anything ever. No one will ever get a perfect bracket. And I, I have, okay, so I have 22 out of 32 correct picks. So I think it's point, I have 22 points right now out of 63. So the overall leaders right now have 30 points. And I'm only eight points away, but still, like, yo, did anybody pick UMBC? Like, I'm looking at this guy. He's the he's the leaderboard. Damn, he's got everything right. He has everything right except the Buffalo and Virginia one. That's pretty solid. What if UMBC goes to the Elite Eight? How fucking crazy would that be? The I mean, it's possible. UMBC could definitely go to the Elite Eight. I mean, they could go to the Sweet 16 because, I mean, they could beat Kansas State. But <laughs> watch Kansas State blow them out. Like, completely just blow them out. Like, I was reading a stat that UMBC got blown out to, by Albany by, like, 80 to, I think it was, like, 80-something to 39. Okay. And it's just like, and then you go and beat the number one seed in the tournament. It's like, how high are you going to be coming into this next game tomorrow? Are you going to be level-headed? Are you guys going to be way off the shits? Or are you guys going to be just like completely low because you've just been so high and celebrated that completely like you're going to be a little out of it, a little out of whack? You know, it all depends on how that coach brings his mentality and that enthusiasm and energy and all that spark and rage and I don't know, whatever he wants to bring to that team. It's all, I believe it's just like that coach has to keep those players composed going in to Sunday's game. Because Kansas State's not a great team. Like... I'm not sitting here, I've never watched Kansas State and been like, yo, I'm impressed with them this season. Granted, I've never watched that much, but like, who do they end up playing? UMBC is going to play Kansas State, and Kansas State, okay. I, I just, Kansas State's not that, like, it's doable. That's what I'm saying, especially since like, 
they have all this energy and just positive momentum going for them that they could pull off this upset again. And, like, this would be a huge upset. A 16 seed in the Sweet 16. <clears throat> if they were to pull off that, they would probably end up playing Kentucky. Because, I, I mean, could you imagine if Buffalo beat Kentucky, UMBC beats Kansas State, and then a 13 seed and a 16 seed are playing to go to the Elite Eight? Like, that's, that's unspeakable of you've never heard of such a thing i mean that would definitely be out of this world type of shit to happen is a 16 seed and a 13 seed playing to go to the elite eight you know i wouldn't even be mad if that happened you know i love watching this shit happen because especially when i'm a maryland fan and maryland's not in the tournament you just love seeing the upsets and you love seeing the crazy buzzer beaters and everything the only upset I was able to call correct correctly was um, Loyola Chicago over um, Miami. And I mean, when I'm looking at this guy's thing, it's just like, damn, I'm stupid. Like, how did I get this wrong? And it's just like, how did these guys get these right? Like, you know, I feel like it just takes a lot of luck and a lot of maybe, I don't know, man, like a lot of patience and maybe you're getting lucky. But I picked one upset, right? I had Loyola, Chicago over Miami. But I I mean, I also had South Dakota State over Ohio State. And I mean, that was a really good game. That was close the entire game. Ohio State ended up pulling through. I also had Davidson over Kentucky just because I wanted to see Kentucky lose. I don't know. I don't hate Kentucky. I just wanted to see him lose. And that was a good game. That was a really close game. And they almost pulled off the upset, but no. So, I mean, it's just like, how do you always call these? It's just, March is crazy. March is madness. It was definitely awesome to see that buzzer beater in Loyola, Chicago against Miami. Even though they put .3 seconds back on the clock, that was a fucking buzzer beater. That was dope to see because you don't see them all the time. And it's just fucking awesome to see. So, guys, I do want to apologize that I don't have my background. I have some shitty background that looks like I've been living in my grandparents or basement parents basement and I actually am in my parents basement but I'm just recording down here because I have stuff going on up there in my office but guys today's St. Patrick's Day and I just realized that even though I have on my green Irish shirt and speaking of green well happy St. Patrick's Day yes not gonna get drunk today I don't drink that much anymore because I always hurt myself. I was so speaking of green. I went to the uh, DC community like some weed festival, some cannabis festival that they like throw every night, and this was my first time going. And I went on, what was it? Tuesday? No, I went Wednesday night, and it was the craziest thing. It's just walking into a dispensary, basically a dispensary. You walk into a shop. You go upstairs and there's just vendors selling cannabis and oils and flowers and edibles and it's just awesome because cannabis and sports are the two best things that God has granted me with this life and I love both. So happy St. Patrick's Day, stay green, enjoy your day, be safe, peace out, medicated sports talk, I love y'all.